Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Malloy and I'm a CPR instructor here at the Cree Centre for Life Saving and I'm also a coronary care nurse at University College Hospital Galway. You're very welcome to today's session and today we are going to uh, demonstrate resuscitation in three different age groups, the infant, the child and the adult. And before we do that, it's just to tell you the importance of why we should all learn CPR. About 70% of all cardiac arrests happen outside of the hospital setting and that means that that could happen in your home, in your community, to a loved one, uh, to somebody you know. So it's very important to be able to initiate the skills of CPR as fast as possible. So the first thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you the three different age groups that we're going to work on today. We are going to cover a resuscitation on the infant, child and adult and we're also going to cover choking on these three age groups. So this is just to introduce you to resuscitation and um, after this session you may then feel you want to go on and learn more extended skills. So first of all we will go to the three different age groups. So the infant for the purpose of resuscitation the infant is under one year of age. The child is from one to signs of puberty and the adult is from signs of puberty upwards. And if you're ever unsure, always treat as an adult. So the very first thing um, when somebody collapses, you know, you may be alerted to a sound, you may be alerted to a bang, but it's in, you must immediately get in and try and provide help for this person. But before you do, you do not want to become a victim yourself. So just stop and check that the scene around you is safe, that you're not going to fall over anything. Nothing is going to fall on top of you. There's no broken glass eyes. So just make sure briefly the scene is safe. The next thing you come down to this individual and you check them for response. You know, are they responding to you? And the best way to do that is to tap their shoulders gently, but shout, are you okay? Hello, hello, are you okay? Now, I'm just going through these and then I will demonstrate it all in quick succession. The minute you've established there's no response from this person, you need help. So straight away, find somebody and just say, you dial 999 and bring me the nearest defibrillator. Now here, it is very important if you know your postcode, you know, that will allow the ambulance to get to you an awful lot quicker. So you've put out that call for help. If there's nobody around, you must pick up that phone yourself and dial 999. Put it on loudspeaker. So now you can get on with the next part. So you want to check this person, are they breathing normally? I.e., do I need to give them resuscitation? Are they breathing normally? Look them up and down, and if they don't appear to be breathing like you or I, they are in trouble. You need to start resuscitation. It is always better to default to resuscitation rather than to stand back wondering, are they in cardiac arrest? You will not do any damage to this person. So. If they are not breathing, you have your ambulance call put out, straight away you need to get into compressions. You pull the clothes up and to perform compressions on this person, you need to put the heel of your hand on the lower half of the breastbone, right in the centre. Breastbone, the lower half, right in the centre, just the heel of your hand, elbow locked, the other hand on top. And now you're going to press down at least two inches, pressing hard and fast. And we will do 30 compressions just to show you. And if you know how to give breaths, you would then go and perform two breaths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Then you would go on and demonstrate, give two breaths. Okay. If you do not know how to give breaths, and you may you may not have done a CPR course, you will continue with compressions 
until advanced care arrives. So that will be the ambulance and if the defib arrives. So I'm going to take that now from start to finish and just show it to you in quick succession. So this is adult CPR. So the first thing when we arrive, check the scene. Somebody has collapsed here. People are in distress around, okay? So the scene is safe. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Hello, hello, no response. Help, help, can somebody dial 999 and bring me the nearest defibrillator? Check for normal breathing. Are they breathing nice and normally like you or I? If they are not, immediately default to CPR. Close up out of the way, heel of the hand on the lower part of the chest, other one on top, and compressions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And continue on with compressions until help arrives. If you know how to give the breaths, after 30 compressions, give your two breaths. And just keep going with compressions and breaths. Now, not everything happens as simply as that. You might find somebody collapsed in this state. You still do your checks exactly what way they're lying. So you arrive on this scene, the scene is safe. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Hello. Don't be afraid to put your hand on their back, your hand around their mouth. Can you feel normal breathing? And if you can't, you are now within your rights to turn them over. It becomes life over limb. If you have established that somebody is unresponsive and not breathing normally, you can move them. And of course, you'll have your call put out and now you start your compressions. Compressions should always be done on a firm, hard surface, if at all possible. Now, if somebody collapses in a bed, do not waste time trying to get out onto the floor. You do the compressions wherever you find them. Sometimes you might have something firm or hard that you could roll in under the back. However, do not delay compressions, but make sure that call is out. Now, I am just going to demonstrate a defibrillator for you, just so that you see how a defibrillator works. If there is somebody else there, make sure that they are still compressing on this person while you are getting on the defibrillator. So here's our defibrillator for training purposes. They are very, very simple and easy to use. In all defibrillators, there's an on-off button, on-off, and there's a shock button. The second it arrives, you place it by the head, you turn it on, and follow the prompts. Call for help. It reminds you, have you called the ambulance? Remove all clothing from patient's chest. All defibs will have a scissors, mask, all little extras. Get out that scissors, immediately cut the clothes. You just need the clothes out of the way. Make sure the, the chest to open bag. is dry. Pads will be in a sealed blue little pack. On pads. Peel one pad off blue plastic. Pads. Apply pad to bare skin. Peel off. Exactly as shown in the picture. One at a time. Press pad firmly. Press it on. Peel other pad off blue plastic. The second you have the Apply pads pad on, to bare skin. stop CPR. Exactly as shown in the picture. Let it read. Press pad firmly. Pads are on. Remove all. Do not touch patient. Okay, stop CPR. Evaluating heart rhythm. It's now reading the patient, this person's heart rhythm. Stand by. And it will decide whether Preparing a shock is needed. Shock. We have a shock, so now everyone you need to make sure that everyone is safe. Before you do, I'm clear, all clear, nobody is touching. Deliver your shock, shock and delivered. straight into CPR. That person may come around after the first shock. It may need successive shocks. If there is no signs of life, continue with CPR. So that is a synopsis of adult resuscitation. I'm now also just going to demonstrate to you what to do if somebody chokes on you. So you're out at a restaurant. You're out at um, 
a function and there's a lot of people around the table, just be aware that often when people start choking, you know, you may not initially recognize that often people get up, they're coughing, they get embarrassed and they start to walk away. So the first thing is, if anyone is having a bad fit of coughing after eating, follow them, just go with them, stay with them. Coughing is a natural reflex when somebody starts choking. But if they cannot expel what's in their mouth very quickly, if they're not coughing it up, you need to get in very, very quickly and help them. So the first thing you, you go to this person and you ask them, you know, are you choking? I'm here, I can help you. So just so that you uh, reassure them that you're going to help them. The next thing you need to do is you need to get behind them in a good knee stance, getting on a good leg stance, getting your leg in between their legs so that you have a good balance. Now, we call this the Heimlich maneuver. You need to put your arms around them, get your finger on the belly button. So this person is in front of you now, they're upright. Get your finger on their belly button. Make a fist with your other hand and bring it in, thumb to the belly, just above the finger. Now lock onto it. So this is the position for uh, the Heimlich maneuver, above the belly button, and then you very quickly pull in and up, in and up, until A, you expel what's in the mouth, or B, they start to lose consciousness. If they start to lose consciousness, they're going to drop to the ground. Immediately, it is CPR. Immediately, it is CPR. Make sure that call is put out. There's no need to go checking them. You go straight into compressions. A choking that collapses to the ground, straight into compressions. Make sure you have your 999 call come out. And the only difference is that after every 30 compressions, when you come up, if you know how to give breaths, before you give the breaths, look in the mouth and only if you can see something, pull it out and carry on then with your compressions and apply a defibrillator as soon as it arrives. So let me demonstrate that just once more for you. So somebody is choking, okay? Get behind them, I can help you. Finger on the belly button, fist just above, lock on and in and up, in and up, good and firm, until A, you expel what's in the mouth, or B, they lose consciousness. Okay, so we'll go on now and we'll just uh, look at the child. And I suppose, in some ways, I will just group the child and the infant here as regards uh, resuscitation. The biggest uh, cause of cardiac arrest in an infant or a child is generally a respiratory, a breathing problem. A breathe. So we would ask you to intervene very, very early. And it's all about the three words we use here, here at Cree really. Prevention, prevention, prevention. Breathing problems, intervene early, get them to a doctor, get them to a hospital. If you're any way concerned, it is very important to intervene early uh, before it becomes a bigger problem. Uh, the other thing is accidents. Uh, so just making sure that accidents are prevented, high vis vests, helmets, anything like that. However, if a child does go into cardiac arrest, the little differences to think about are, um, it's a smaller chest, so you may only need to use one hand as opposed to two. Smaller lungs, you just need to give enough air to rise the lung if you know how to give the breaths. So, but the principles are exactly the same as the adult. So I'm just going to very briefly demonstrate it. It is still 30 compressions to two breaths. If you cannot give breaths, again, you continue with continuous compressions. So I will take it from the start and just um, demonstrate this for you. Very same, scene is safe. Check for response. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Hello, no response. Help, help. Dial 999 and bring me the nearest defibrillator. Check for normal breathing. In children or infants, they will go blue very, very quickly. You will not be in any doubt. Not breathing. So now, again, it's the lower half of the breastbone, the heel of the hand. You can use one or two. And again, you want to push down about one third of the depth of the chest that's in front of you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, up to 30 and keep continuing. One to 30, one to 30. If you can give breaths, it's 30 compressions to two breaths. 
So just one hand or two, but make sure you're pressing down one third of the depth of the chest. The diff we're just going to cover choking now. And the difference between an adult and a child choking is a child may not give you much noise when they're choking. Often you will be lucky if you hear a squeak. So this is why it's very important that children are sitting down around the table and they're in their vi your visual when they're eating. So get yourself kneeling down behind this child now. So this child is choking, is in distress. Again, finger on the belly button, fist just above and inwards in and up, in and up. You see the good balance I have and in and up until A, you expel what's in the mouth, or B, they lose consciousness. The second they lose consciousness, straight into CPR, bare chest, straight into CPR. And that covers the child section. So a lot of the principles of the adult are the same, but you're dealing with a smaller chest, smaller pair of lungs, one hand or two. And now, finally, we will go on to the infant. So slightly different here in that when an infant collapses, um, we just check them slightly different, okay? So again, they will go quite blue. Again, it's all about prevention. If there is any deterioration in your child's breathing, get them to a hospital as fast as possible. You can see that I'm resuscitating at this level. This little infant is quite small. It is much easier to perform effective CPR at this level. So when you go to this infant, to get a response, you tap the foot. Baby, 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 no response. Help, help, get out your call. To check for breathing, just dip down and you can see their chest very clearly, but you will be in no doubt they will also have gone quite blue. And to perform CPR on an infant, you mark a finger across the nipple line of a bare chest. So across the nipple line of a bare chest and place two fingers just below, right in the center and straight down. And again, it's 30 compressions to two breaths. If you haven't been trained to give breaths, you keep going with these 30 compressions, one to 30, one to 30, one to 30. So count up to 30 and then start again and keep going with that until advanced care arrives. Now, for the choking on this little one, okay, again, it's different to the other two. You pick this infant up, put it over your arm, and it's back slaps and chest truss. So get a good grip. You can sit down, stand up, as long as you've got a good grip of that baby's jaws there, and you have it over one arm. Pin it in, because it might be quite distressed if it's choking and will be kicking off you. You want to perform... Pr back slaps right across the, uh, the shoulder, uh, where the shoulder blades come in there. So five back slaps and five chest truss. One, two, three, four, five. Good and firm. Cup the head and over onto the other hand and exactly where you did CPR, five chest truss. Over again, back slaps. Now, if at any time that infant starts becoming limp in your arms, a limp baby equals cardiac arrest. Straight on here, make sure your emergency call is put out. We would always advise that if an infant starts choking, it is very important to call an ambulance anyway because particularly if a little item has gone down their throat, their little tissue is very, very soft. And while you might be able to uh, relieve the choking, later there may be some trauma to the throat. So it is better off for this little infant to be taken to hospital immediately um, once, you, once you relieve choking. It is better off to get this infant to the hospital so that their throat can be examined. So all infants that have choked should be seen in A&E. For the uh, child and the adult, we recommend that they, are t uh, that they are seen by their doctor just to examine them to make sure that there is no uh, damage done after perform the Heimlich manoeuvre. So that is a brief synopsis of choking, in the, choking and resuscitation in the infant, in the child and in the adult.